welcome back. In this lecture 24, I will continue our discussion on polymers in solution and I will show few application of Flory Huggins theory which I derived in the last lecture. In this lecture, these are the topics I plan to cover. Now, we derived Flory Huggins theory in last lecture. Now, some of the usefulness of Flory Huggins theory are mentioned here. For example, we will be able to explain large negative deviations from Raoult's law and other equilibrium thermodynamic properties of polymer solutions using Flory Huggins theory. We can also explain phase separation and fractional behavior of polymer solutions. We can explain solubility behavior of high polymers and swelling of polymer networks in different solvents using Flory Huggins theory. And we can also explain melting, on, melting point depression in crystalline polymers. Now, there are deficiencies in Flory Huggins theory. This theory, while it is able to predict general trend and several thermodynamic properties can be explained using Flory Huggins theory, but precise agreement with experimental data is not achieved. Now, this is because there are several assumptions was were made during derivations of Flory Huggins theory. For example, single type of cells were utilized for solvent molecule and polymer segments, which may not be very applicable for polymer segments. Another clause or assumption was made that when we introduce one fragment of polymer in this 3D lattice, it was assumed that all other polymer chains which were already present in the 3D lattice, they are distributed uniformly. Now, that is not true, especially in dilute solutions because polymer fragments are or polymer segments are indeed connected to each other. Hence, it is not true or it is not accurate that the polymer segments which were already present in the 3D cells, they were distributed uniformly. And that was we mentioned as mean field approximation. So, this is not valid for dilute solution. It may be valid at high concentration of polymers in solution. Total number of possible arrangement does not exclude the self intersections of polymer chains. Now, polymer chains can actually there is a possibility that they can overlap with each other and some of the vacant cell around a particular segment may not be available due to self intersections. Now, that was not considered during derivation of Flory Huggins theory. Also, the addition of these segments in this 3D set was purely statistical, which may not true if there is a non-zero contact energy between solvent molecules and polymer molecules. For example, any specific solvent polymer in interactions may lead to orientation of solvent molecules around the polymer segments, which is not considered, which was not considered during the derivation of Flory Huggins theory. It was also considered that the polymer solvent interaction parameter chi not concentrated concentration dependent, which, which may not be true. It may be also concentration dependent. So, these are the assumption which were made during derivation of Flory Huggins theory are not 
applicable in 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 toto that's the reason we do not get precise agreement with the experimental data when we predict a thermodynamical property using flory huggins theory now we will discuss how this flory huggins theory can be utilized to derive some of the thermodynamic parameters now before that let me revise the thermodynamics of liquid mixtures quickly now delta g of mixing is given by this expression g is the gives free energy of the mixture and this is for the pure solvent and this is for pure solute two is generally expressed as solute and one is generally utilized for solvent and this star means we are talking about pure component so we can differentiate this with number of moles of solvent and we get this expression so this is we know partial molar gives free energy which is also called chemical potential of solvent in this case because we are using one this term is the chemical potential of pure component and if we use one bar pressure then this is the standard chemical potential for solvent molecule and obviously this is zero so if we plug in these numbers or this uh, quantities into this expression we get this right hand side is equal to mu1 minus mu1 mu1 uh, mu1 not and this is we represent as partial molar gibbs free energy change now this is gibbs free energy change so we know at constant temperature and pressure if this is negative then the solution process is continuous so the for a miscible solution we must have this quantity less than 0 we also know that g is given by h minus ts h is enthalpy and s is entropy so the partial quantities can be also expressed in this at constant temperature so this term can be expressed in terms of partial gibbs free energy change can be utilized in terms of partial enthalpy change molar enthalpy change and partial molar entropy change of the of solvent in case of ideal solution we express this quantity as uh, this uh, like this where pi is the partial vapor pressure of ith component pi not is the pressure of the pure component so we have seen this in the last slide and we know that for ideal solution the entropy of mixing is given by this expression where ni is the number of mole and xi is the mole fraction of ith component so partial molar entropy change will be given by this expression which is given by this and obviously we are talking about ideal solution so this enthalpy partial enthalpy change will be zero so if we place this two value in this expression we get mu y minus mu y not rt ln xi now if you compare the value for mu y minus mu y not between this expression and this expression we can write py by pi not is equal to mole fraction of ith component and which is nothing but raoult's law now for a real solution this mole fraction is replaced by activity where this mole fraction gives the ideal component and this activity coefficient gives the deviation from ideality so we can express this term as ideal component and this is excess component which basically determine the deviation from ideality now we go back to the flory huggins equation and for solvent 
we can this quantity partial gives free energy molar gives free energy change with respect to solvent if we differentiate with respect to ni we get this expression and for for polymer we differentiate with n2 which is the number of moles of polymer molecule we get this expression and we generally express polymer in terms of number of segments because while deriving the flory huggins expression we consider polymers are consist of several segments and each segment is having same molar volume as the solvent molecule so we generally express this term in terms of polymer segment per polymer segment so we divide this by x which is the number of polymer segment and if we consider that polymers have different chain length so they will have different number of segments as well so if we consider that then instead of just writing number of segment we can write number average number of segments in the polymer sample but for time being we will not consider the average quantity we will consider as a polymer chains having similar molecular weight. So, we will consider x. Now, for the solvent we have seen this expression in last slide. Now, if we assume a dilute polymer solution then we can express the volume fraction of the polymer with total number of polymer segment this is number of polymer segment in one polymer chain this is number of polymer chain so it gives gives the total number of volumes of from polymer and this is total number of volume from polymer plus solvent so this gives the volume fraction so and because this n1 is much higher compared to this term we can write approximately this equals to this similarly the mole fraction of the polymer we can write or approximately like this and if we also assume that this is independent of polymer the polymer solvent interaction parameter is independent of polymer concentration then simply by mathematical expression we can write this expression from the original Gibbs uh, Flory Huggins expression we know that this can be expressed for a real solution as this we which have two parts one ideal part and another is excess part which quantifies the deviation from ideality. Now this can be expressed x1 can be expressed as 1 minus x2. So, we can write this and mathematically we can write this the ideal component. So, if you compare these two this is equal to this which means this is the ideal quantity hence this must be this term must be equal to the excess quantity of partial molar gives free energy change for a real solution. Hence we can write this excess quantity which is the measure of deviation from ideality is given by this expression where chi is the polymer solvent interaction parameter. Now, we can expand this expression. Now, this first term is because of polymer solvent contact interactions. In ideal solution there is no contact interactions del H or the enthalpy change of interaction between polymer solvent is 0, but in this case this is non, not 0 in case of real solution and because enthalpy change is not 0 it also influence the polymer conformation. So, there could be the entropy change as well due to polymer solvent contract interaction and the second term is because that the polymer segments are connected. So, the volume of 
molar volume of polymers and the solvents are not same. So, this term arises because of the fact that polymer segments are connected. Once again, if we look at the polymer solvent interaction parameter, it is a measure of thermodynamic affinity of the solvent for the polymer. It is a measure of quality of the solvent and it is temperature dependent. Now, if the term excess this quantity is negative, then the partial molar Gibbs change will be lower than the ideal value, which means the polymer will dissolve in the solvent even better way than in case of ideal solution. If this is positive, then obviously the solvent quality is not as good as ideal solutions and the solubility of the polymer will be lower than ideal case. Now, this term, this is a negative term, so this contribute negative way in this excess term. Hence, this is the term which basically determine whether the solvent is good or solvent is not good and which indirectly is determined by this polymer solvent interaction parameter chi. Now, this is temperature dependent. Hence, with change in temperature, this value also will change. Hence, the miscibility of polymer and the solvent will be also dependent on the temperature at which the solution is being made. For example, if chi is 0.5 or half, then this excess term becomes 0, which means the solvent is behaving like an ideal solvent and the polymer solvent mixture is behaving like an ideal mixture, which means that enthalpy of mixture is 0 and polymer segments are not as if they are not connected. And we call this case the solvent as ideal solvent or theta solvent and the temperature at which this polymer solvent interaction become equals to half, we call that temperature as theta temperature. This is the temperature where the, the solvent becomes ideal solvent for the polymer in consideration. If chi is less than half, then these terms become negative, which means the solvent is good solvent, it is better than the ideal solvent and if it is greater than 0.5, then the solvent, this term becomes positive. So, it is now the solvent is poor solvent, that means the solvent is not as good as the ideal solvent, the solubility of the polymer decrease decreases compared to the ideal case. Hence, the so smaller is the value of this polymer solvent interaction parameter, the better is the solvent thermodynamically. So, if we manage to decrease the value of chi, then the, sol the solvent will be more good solvent or better solvent for the polymer to dissolve. Now, in generally, in most of the cases, as we increase the temperature, the value of chi reduces or decreases, which means if we increase the temperature, generally the solubility of the polymer in a solvent increases because the value of polymer solvent interaction parameter decreases. We will discuss this in little more detail when we talk about phase behavior of polymer in solution in coming lecture. We will come to the modification of Flory Huggins theory. Now, this polymer solvent interaction parameter consists of we discussed a entropic component and a enthalpy component and we have seen this expression before. 
So, we can express this excess term as partial molar Gibbs free energy excess term which can be expressed in terms of enthalpy and entropy and Flory further modified and expressed this term in terms of this expression and entropy in terms of this expression. Now, if we replace this term with this new terms, we can get this expression where psi is the entropic term and kappa is the enthalpic term and if we compare with our original Flory Huggins equation, we can equate kappa minus psi is equal to chi to minus half. In case of ideal solvent, because the excess term becomes 0, this uh, excess partial molar enthalpy becomes equals to the theta, this is the theta temperature and multiplied by the partial molar entropy change. Now, if this, this theta is a temperature, so this is a positive term, hence the sign of this two excess term must be same, which means if the enthalpy partial molar enthalpy change increases, the entropy corresponding entropy also will increase and theta sometimes can be said as the ratio of the partial molar enthalpy excess enthalpy divided by partial molar excess entropy. So, this is the Flory Huggins we, we got from Flory Huggins theory. Now, as we explained that this may not accurately predict the solubility behavior, but this actually is proportional to this term. It may not be exactly equal to this term, but this is indeed proportional to this term for many polymer solvent system, which means again that if we decrease the value of chi polymer solvent interaction parameter, this term comes down, which means the solubility of the polymer in that particular solvent increases. We can equate this term as well using the modified Flory Huggins theory. And in this particular, this is the entropic term. Now, if for some solvent, most of the solvent, this entropic term is positive as we have seen for these solvents, which means the on dissolution due to contact interaction between the solvent and solute molecule, the entropy change become positive. And in this case, the mixing will happen only when temperature is greater than the theta temperature. In that case, this term becomes negative. Now, in some solvent polymer system, if there is strong hydrogen bonding or some strong electrostatic interaction, in that case, entropy terms can be negative because, because of the strong hydrogen bond formation or hydrophobic interaction, there is actually decrease in entropy due to contact between polymer and solvent molecule. In that case, theta must be greater than the temperature, temperature must be lower than the theta temperature to affect the mixing between polymer solvent system. So, to to basically to predict or to identify a solvent for a particular polymer, polymer sample, we need to have idea about their theta temperature as well as the sign of this entropy factor which, which basically depends on the interaction between interaction behavior between polymer and the solvent system. We will now talk about relative vapor pressure and chi. This help us to determine the value of chi. We will go back to the 
uh, original equation of uh, uh, mu minus mu i naught and we can write this expression from Flory Huggins theory. And if the polymer molecular it, it is large then this will be also large. In that case we can ignore this term compared to 1. So, we can just write this term and we can basically rearrange this term to get this expression. This is just nothing but just rearrangement of terms. Now, what is Pi? Pi is the partial vapor pressure of the solvent in the solution and Pi naught is the vapor pressure of the pure solvent in that particular temperature. So, if we plot, so this is one example of polystyrene molecular of 2,90,000 in toluene and methylene, ethylene ketone. So, if we plot this term, this term in y axis, say this is A, if we plot this term in y axis and this uh, term in x axis, then the slope will be given by the polymer solvent interaction parameter. This is for methyl, ethyl ketone and this is for toluene for this particular example. So, from just measuring the vapor pressure of the solution and with the knowledge of the vapor pressure of pure solvent, we can actually find out the value of polymer solvent interaction parameter using this equation. We can also use osmotic pressure uh, and determine polymer solvent interaction parameter and for this also I quickly do this uh, expression. These are just mathematical uh, expression. Now, this we know this term can be expressed as pi partial molar volume of the solvent where pi is the osmotic pressure. This is obtained from our physical chemistry knowledge uh, which we have learned in first year chemistry. So, this is the expression and we can again write the um, Flory Huggins theory and rearrange. In this case x is the ratio of molar volume of the polymer divided by molar volume of the solvent. So, we can just rearrange this. This is the molar volume of the solvent molecule and this is the molar volume of polymer molecule. So, we can rearrange and get the osmotic pressure in this way and with the knowledge that we can express the volume fraction of solvent as volume fraction of polymer and using this approximation and also we can express this volume fraction of either solvent or the polymer as concentration of that solvent or polymer divided by the density and molar volume as molecular weight divided by density. So, if you utilize all these mathematical formulas, then we can express the osmotic pressure divided by the concentration of the solute in this case polymer and we can have this expression. And in case of dilute solution, we can write this as a VDL expression and we can write this expression. Now, this is just a mathematical derivation. So, there is nothing to be discussed too much. You can go through later and find out this uh, derivation and if you have trouble then you can refer any standard book you will be able to find out this derivation. This term A2 is given by this from this expression A2 is 
also known as polymer solvent interaction term which is related to the polymer solvent interaction parameter. So, in dilute solution we can express this quantity as this and but for a real solution we can express this term as a real expression typically which we do for a real solution and we can express this term in terms of osmotic pressure and molar volume of the solvent. So, finally, we can express the osmotic pressure and this concentration is the concentration of the polymer and we can get this expression where Am is the molecular weight of the polymer and C is the concentration of the polymer in solution and these are the virial coefficients. If we plot now, we can measure the osmotic pressure at different concentration and then plot pi by C with respect to concentration and from the intercept we can get the molecular weight and from the slope initial slope we can get this A2 term which is this. So, from there we can get the polymer solvent interaction parameter as well. Now, this expression also can be used to determine the polymer solvent uh, sorry polymer molecular weight. So, we will when we discuss determination of polymer molecular weight in after 2 lectures, we will recall this e equation and just show how the osmotic pressure measurement can be used to determine the molecular weight of a polymer sample. And V2 is the volume of the polymer which can be expressed as volume fraction by concentration. So, we can use this term. Now, with this I will stop for this uh, lecture and next lecture I will talk about uh, solubility parameters and how to use solubility parameters to predict the solubility behavior of polymer sample in a particular sample.